Right, hello everyone, welcome back to We Talk Football. I am your host, Robbie. Robbo was meant to be here, but he's an internet wind in, uh, aka he shot the bed. So, kind welcome back. Um, how's it going? Hello. It's going well, mate. Happy to be here. Hi, um, and we've had to bring in the substitute, Owen. Owen, how are you doing? Uh, you're the first time guest on here. Um, you feeling excited? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I never bother. Um, right, I probably should have got the fixtures up before we started. That would have been good. Right, Saturday, tomorrow, 12 15, Aberdeen Kings team take on Kilmarnock in the Cup. Um, this game is on BBC. Um, I think it'll be a good game. Probably one of the best ties of the Cup considering Celtic are playing Livingston. Uh, we'll go to the Aberdeen fan first. So, uh, Ken, how do you think this game will go? Uh, obviously, not, not a good run of form recently. Overall, but uh, I've got faith in Big Neil Warnock, so I'm going for a 2 1 Aberdeen win. I'm back in the boys. I'm back right, in fair it. enough. Neil Warnock, who's uh, apparently been up screaming at 2 a.m. after Sitman absolutely buried him last week. <laughs> You'll love to see it. Gave him um, nice. <laughs> uh, Owen, how do you think this game will go? Um, as I've seen from the last few games, Aberdeen have not been like not in point so. Uh, I will be going three-one Kilmarnock for this one. Derek McInnes has got Kilmarnock win very well right now. Again, I will say Kelly losing, uh, losing against Rangers and then John to Dundee, so they've not won the last two. Last team they did beat was Aberdeen. Funnily enough, they're playing. <laughs> so um, this will be some game. I'm gonna go. Does this game go to penalties? Do we know? I I think this cup round goes to penalties. If yeah, extra time penalties, I think. Alright, I'm going to go one each, and I think Aberdeen take it on penalties. I think Neil Warnock will finally get a win. Um, He's not even won yet. It's probably one of the worst managerial events we've seen in Scotland for a good while. Definitely. Um, I don't think it can get much worse for Warnock, <laughs> apart from getting knocked out of the cup. But um, <coughs> no, that'll be, I think that's probably my tie of the weekend, to be honest, for the cup. Anyway, um, obviously, I didn't think we've got some crackers, but we'll talk about them later. Um, any other games on Saturday worth mentioning? Man United Everton, we'll cover that next. That kind oh, that is your club oh. right there. That is your club, and we're gonna leave you to last. Yeah. I'll go first. <laughs> um, this is a weird one. Everton, uh, I don't know, I don't know what to think about Everton this season. They're just a bit, yeah, you know, obviously, they get the point deduction. Um, I think they've been saved a few points in my rating soon. Four points. Getting yeah. back. Six uh, points. Six? Was it six for getting back? I, I thought it was four. All right, fair enough. Um, I still don't know good in this season, to be honest. It was just sort of that thing to fling them off. But I think Man United will take this one. Three, one. I think Everton will score the first goal. And then United will score three late ones. Um, Owen, how do you see this game going? Um, both... Both teams are not like as you expect to be right now, and Manu obviously coming off a like not a best performance, and Everton obviously the point induction. So I see this game being a draw, and I'm going to go to each. I think Manu will struggle, and Everton will be quite up for it at the same time. I'm Old Trafford. Yep, I can see a wee to each in there. That is fair enough. Uh, Ken, how do you see this game going? Obviously, um, uh, we have had our fair share of debates on here before. Yeah, United, as um, long as there's uh, well, no mention of the Glazers, what, 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 we'll be all right. <laughs> what, what do you think, uh, think uh, now since we last spoke? Uh, I, I still don't back to that. I think he's got to be gone at the end of the season, to be honest. Like, you can smile, but I think people say to back him, but what? Like, look at who he's brought in. That he's not really done out, has he? He's been backed. He signed Anthony. He's done nothing. He's not scored in the league since last year. He is useless. When you compare the likes of him to Garnacho, he was essentially free. Do you know what I mean? What the difference they've done. But uh, no, I think I think we'll beat Everton comfortably. I go three now. I think we'll be back on it. Obviously Hoyland coming back just in time for the Liverpool game. I'm not sure if he's back this weekend. I don't think he is. But I'll I'll, t- I'll take a Rashford brace. Um, I Ten Hag was saying in the press that Hoyland won't be back until Liverpool game. Yeah, so we'll score an trick there, but <sighs> right. We'll get to that game. Um, get to 
obviously missing Mount, uh, I believe it's missing till April. Am I right? Yeah, Sinton that's, Hugs that's that's what I mean. That was a lot of 40 mil, 60 mil. No, nah, yeah, not really worth it. Money. Right, so yeah. what are you going for score wise? 3 0. 3 0. 3 0. Easy yeah. enough one. How do, where, do, where do you see United finishing at the end of the season? I, I think it's tough because it's the inconsistency. And also, if you look at Hoyland when we had him, the way we were playing, and then he gets injured, we, we literally do not have a striker. So Hoyland gets injured for a longer amount of time than he did. We're finished because Rashford is not a good striker and Martial's just never there. So I think fifth, I don't think we'll get top four. I think it's going to be a bit shaky. It's going to be up and down for the rest of the season. But I think next transfer window, there's a lot to be done. Signings to be brought in. If they do keep Tanag, if they sack him, get someone new in for the project, it'll be interesting to see what Sir Jim does when it comes to fair, it. Fair enough. Um, I, I think I, I don't. I just don't see who you're going to bring to the club if you sack Tanag. I think that's the main issue. I don't know who's like you know. I don't like. Do you see Zidane really coming to United? Like I don't know. Like I, I don't. I don't want him. People talk no. about him, what he did at Madrid, right? But it's not really done. If you look at a manager like what Fergie did before he joined United, it was Aberdeen, it was something impressive. Obviously, three UCLs is impressive, but it was with Real Madrid. He had one of the best teams of all time. It was like Pep at Barca. When you're given a team like that, you don't really have to do much on the sideline. The players you've got do it for themselves, do you know what I mean? I'd rather someone a bit more. I don't want the Zerbi either. So if we've got to stick with an Arg, we'll have to stick with a bold man. See what happens. <laughs> Oh, and you didn't look. The, the ship's gonna go down at some point. Oh, and you didn't look too convinced with his comments. Are you getting to add? Uh, well, I don't know. Like he's Ten Hag. You see what he's done at Ajax, and he won like, all the stuff at Ajax. He's basically brought the same players in from Ajax, and they've not really done much. Like, obviously, Anthony, he's not been. He's not been good at all. He's not done anything for Man Uris, but uh, all season. And yeah, I just I think I think you need to give Ten Hag another maybe another full season maybe to see what he can do and then try and get Manu back at the top four next season and get him back playing Champions League football again. Because he's got the experience. He knows what he's doing. I think uh, the overlap with Ollie was quite interesting. Kind okay, of no say any comments, Kind of you've not yeah. watched it yet, but that was quite an interesting one. Um, was, moving Jose on Mourinho back in the club. <laughs> I, I, I take it. I take Kane's Mourinho idol. Older. That is I, Kane's I, I idol. Mourinho. But Kane no, do you know with, if Ten Hag is another season, right? It's hypothetically, and they give him a transfer window and back him, and then he makes two, three big signings, spends a bit of money, doesn't make the correct signings, and then end of that season he's sacked. The new manager that comes in, it's going to be the repeat of you're stuck with a group of players that might not back you. That's what happened when you watched the overlap with Rooney on, if you've seen it. When Fergie left, the players weren't with the gaffer. They're not supporting it, so you just don't want that same cycle. So if they're going to have an idea to sack him, I think you're better to do it now when you can potentially ship Anthony off, get him gone. Potentially bring back a certain player that's at Getafe currently on loan. I'm open to it. He's very good. I take it. I've got no models if it comes to winning leagues. But actually, you know, if they're going to sack him, I think it's got to be done now rather than giving him an extra season. But Sir Jim's got a plan and I'm backing it. Fair enough. I just think uh, you were talking about respect. I think that is one good thing, you know, Jose Mourinho could bring to the club. You know, he spoke out, he said he has unfinished business at United. You know, he is a manager that the players will respect no matter what who the player is. So, I mean, I think it would be cool to see Mourinho back in uh, the job, to be honest. Um, moving on to Sunday, we'll go in order the game. So, we'll start with Aston Villa taking on Tottenham at one o'clock. Um, this is a battle of sort of top four, would you say? Top yeah. battle of top four? Aye. Um, yeah. But at Villa Park, Villa obviously, um, they have been, I mean, they've not been, I, I wouldn't say they've been as dominant as they were. Like last this time last month, but you know they've still got their wins going. Um, against easier opposition, obviously just drawn with Ajax and they'll know away from home, I believe. Um, how do you see this one going? We'll start with King. Uh, I think Villa will win. I'm not, I'm not too confident, but I think it'll be a tough game. Obviously, it's big for the top four, 
but I feel Villa have a bit more just to offer. I feel like they can pounce on something a bit more if Tottenham make a mistake. So I'm, I'm going to go to two nil Villa. Ollie Watkins is on fire. He, he's going to bag a brace, and then they'll beat him. That's what I'm backing. You know, on the hype train, Andrews, we will never stop. And I never was on it from start of the season when you were saying Andrews the guy. I went, I don't back him. He's Listen, I think Andrew just came into English football. He's, he's got the Tottenham team playing well. They are the high up the league for Tottenham, you know. I think they're doing well. I think, See what happens. I think he needs a couple. I think he needs another transfer window to get his in, sort of, with some of these players in. I think that's what he needs. Um, Owen, how do you see this game going? Um, Tottenham just came off the back here. Obviously, not a comeback win against Palace. Um, but I also think Villa's going to win this game. Um, Aston Villa got a good draw away at Amsterdam on Thursday. Um, I can see this going. I can see it going either way, but I think Villa will take it by two goals to one. Fair enough. Um, I'm on the same as yours too. As much as I love Ange, uh, can you know how much I love Ange? I've bloated about him since he joined Tottenham. Uh, I don't think he's got enough away at Villa. I just think Villa are too strong right now. Um, we'll go with 3-0 Villa and I think John McGinn will score the three because why not? It's a McGinn party. Um, half two, back to Scotland. We have Celtic taking on Livingston. Uh, we're going to leave on to last because why not? It's funny, isn't it? Uh, I'll kick this one off. Um, obviously, Celtic in the last round putting us out. Thank you for that. Uh, I spent 17 quid on a ticket just to watch Jim Goodwin for 90 minutes. Um, so that was fun. Um, listen, there's no much to say about this game. David Martin Martindale and his boys have absolutely no chance here at Celtic Park. Um, it wouldn't surprise. Oh, and I sent you a hang yesterday. Me and Lewis, he's online saving football manager. And Celtic beat Livingston 10 0 at home. Um, <laughs> I don't think it will reach that level on Sunday, but I'll go 5 0 Celtic. Um, Kane, how do you think this game will go? Uh, I, I think it's quite obvious, isn't it? There's not much to cover. I, I, I'll give it a 4 0 Celtic. All right, fair enough. And uh, Owen, just quickly before we move on to Kane, do you want to say something? No. No, all right. I thought I heard you fucking talk. All right, I'm losing my marbles. <laughs> um, Owen, just before we go into the result, um, Celtic season, obviously, you know, the eight points clear. You're now battling out with Rangers. Um, how have you found the season so far? Would you think of Brendan Rodgers more specifically? Um, well, is that is that simple? We were, we were eight points clear and we thought that, like, Everyone thought that was that was that was it. We all thought that was it done. But um stupid drop points have put us back in this position and we should never be in this position to this day. We should never be two points behind them. We've beat them twice and we're still we're somehow still two points behind them. Um this season. For me it's it's been tough to watch at stages this season. And I never, in a million years, did I want Rogers ever back at my at my football club after what he done. Um, but yeah, he's he's came back and he's just he's put us backwards again, and it's not looking good right now. I mean, I I think like you know, uh, Stephen, uh, I, you know, I, I want to try and cause a bit of beef. I don't think the Hearts manager will ever see this, right? But I'm going to ask a question. Yeah, uh, Stephen A. Smith came out of the press earlier and said, I'm not surprised we beat Celtic. We should be beating the old firm at home every time. Um, we should be more dominant against the old firm. You know, what do you make of that? Uh, nah, I think he has got a point. He's got a good point, to be fair. Like, at home to the old firm, like, you've got the fans behind you and and the players are up for it from the first whistle. And they should be battling against Rangers and Celtic but it's the fact that it's like unfortunately Rangers, um, Hearts always just lied into Rangers every time so it doesn't matter um, but uh, they should be battling against the old firm every week at Time Castle because they've got the fans behind them they've got the players up for it and uh, they should be they should be I think I mean, higher I up think. as they expect 
I think it's interesting because obviously we had the debate after the game uh, last week about, you know, you were saying the referee sort of ruined that game. You know, I, I just think, you know, my point is, I think Celtic, you know, the red card came in what minute? Uh, hold on, double check. The 16th minute. 16th. I think even though Ida missed a penalty before, I think Celtic have got enough time there to make the changes and try and get back in the game. You know, I know what you're saying. The red card completely takes the wind out of Celtic and... Mm-hmm. For that half especially, but you know, Rogers has got a half time to talk to his team, try and motivate them back up to go at the second half and try and get the results. So, you know, I, I get what you're saying, you know, the referee did ruin that particular moment, but again, Celtic should have enough quality and time to go out there and change that result. Yeah, definitely. It's the, um, fact, that it's, it's the fact that that red card, because we looked fine in the game, we were controlling the game, and then that, obviously, and I've always, and I said, when it happened, but it happened five minutes after it happened five minutes later. I said, You've got to bring on a winner because if you bring on a winner, you've still got your back four, you can play two in the midfield, two out wide, and you'll still have your striker up front. But we never done anything like that, and that's what I thought was poor. We should have run on a winner straight after. Ah, fair enough. But uh, moving on to the game, um, what's your score prediction? Do you see an upset? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I see an upset, I'll well do something that people will regret. Um but um I can't I can't see Livingston doing anything on Sunday. Well hopefully I'm wrong in that anyway. Hopefully they don't do anything. Um but as I said we've not been that great this season so I will go I'll go with three now in that one. All right, fair enough. Um, we'll move on back down to England for Liverpool taking on Manchester City. Now, Kane, I've got a question. Obviously, the Manchester derby happened. Um, I must say, what a hit for Rashford. Uh, I know you didn't want to talk about this game. I just want to ask you, you know, obviously me and Owen are Liverpool supporters, if you like. Um, what, what, what sort of threat do you see City posing at this game, especially since it is at Anfield, you know, it's a change for the Etihad. <laughs> on what they had in the Manchester derby? Uh, I think, obviously, both teams, if they win the league, they, they both gain something to United. Liverpool, to get the 20th league title, equaling our record. And if City win the league, they win four in a row, which breaks our record, and they win three in a row twice. Then they've set their own record, do you know what I mean? So I think both sides, ideally, I think a draw, because uh, an Arsenal can get a chance at winning the league. But I, I, think, I think City run wild. I just don't see Liverpool doing anything against them. I just think, obviously, the Darby, I think, uh, you know, United's style was kind of more soak it up, try and catch them on a break, and we did with the Onana goal kick that led to Rashford's goal. You know, there was little shades of it, but then it was just very sit back, fucking hell, they've got Haaland. Where I think, obviously, with Van Dyke, you, you can kind of, it's not Johnny Evans, you know what I mean? You can defend somewhat early in Haaland. But I, I just see the game being City just run wild. I think at Anfield, I'll be honest, I don't think it matters. The atmosphere is a myth. It's all on speakers and then you go silent. There's nothing really there compared to if you played at Old Trafford or even at the Etihad because the fans do turn up sometimes. But I, I, I go City and I'm, go, I'm going free now. I just all think right. they'll, they'll take control of it and they're going to win the league. Fair enough. Um, you know, the point about Haaland, I, I thought it was incredibly poor in the derby, actually. Um, <laughs> I, I know... The Johnny Evans I know, effect. I know he scored, but that chance was it just before half time? Yeah, the open net like, where you know, he, he just, tried to get his foot up to it rather than heading it. You have to score that if you're the top <laughs> striker. Like I'm like, I know he's caught in two minds, but you've still got to score that. I mean, I think any of us could score that if we were sat in that position. I, I think he on. just he went for more of a glory with the kick and you know tried to make it look better than rather than just fucking knotting it in. He should have just had yeah, it, yeah. but the Johnny Evans effect, he scared him. He had him short. <laughs> I think I actually think it'll be a closer game than you think. Well, I think Liverpool, you know, at Anfield, I know you're going to say that about the crowd and it's silent and all this and that. I think Liverpool's team will show up. Um, I didn't get a chance to see the Slavia Prague game. Um, I just heard we were fairly comfortable. Uh, for the whole game, you know, being that I don't think they're ever going to really cause an upset or the like. Let's not take a piss here. Um, I ain't getting into this game. I ain't got to be closer than people think. I ain't the defence need to be the most important part of the team because, again, they need to keep that Man City attack oh, like, shut. They need to shut them out of the game. 
I think uh, was it Foden that got a double? Am I right in saying? Uh, Foden yeah, for the double. Yeah, well, um, well, well, he's the summer that got that. I mean that uh, the first goal he scored was something special. Um, I think you'll need to keep him, and I think you'll need to keep Haaland shot at this game. And if we can do that, I think the attack comes itself. You know, you've got some quality players up there that can cause a threat to City. So I'm gonna go two one Liverpool. I think Liverpool beat City. I want Klopp to do everything in his power to win this league because it's obviously his last season. And I want to see Klopp win it and that he can. So I I'll go two one Liverpool. What about you? Um going well going back to the Slavia game yesterday, I watched the full game and um we looked comfortable. But honestly, the amount of chances that Slavia had was unbelievable. Kelleha was outstanding last night. He was, if it wasn't for him, Slavia could have been 5 feet up at half time. Um, but we were comfortable after that. So I feel like City were one of the best in the derby. They get, obviously, the, the luck that they wanted with the Foden strike. They were one of the best in the derby. Nothing was going their way. Um, I just feel like at Anfield, from the first whistle, the fans are going to be right up for it. They're going to, they're going to, Power the team on and all that, and I'm gonna go three one Liverpool, and I think Salah's getting a double and Nunes is getting one. Fair enough, Nunes. Ben. The man uh, last Nunes. season, Robbie, Robbie said Nunes would outscore Haaland last season. Well, we all made mistakes. We did a season preview, but I'd like to say, do you know what? See the comments from Trent about City. Uh, I've actually, saying, I've seen everybody talking about them, but I've not seen the comments. What did they say? Base basically to summarise it, we're saying that the stuff Liverpool's won is is better achievements than what City have won. So obviously the treble, and uh, I feel in a sense that gives me a feeling that Pep's the type of guy to see that, and you know use that to get his players going. And, and I feel obviously it's not a major thing because you know you've won a treble there. If not simple as do you know what I mean, it's not like a big thing. But I think if you look at it. Would you not, as a player like Haaland or De Bruyne or Foden, want to go out there and show them, especially with Foden being on the left, Trent being on the right, show them that, you know, you're not better. Do you know what I mean? We've got more than you. Go out there, show them what it is. Go for the league title. I think uh, Pep has made some comments after the Trent, what Trent said. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what he said. I can't remember. I've seen it earlier, but... I think he has used it as motivation for his players, and he's got every right to use it as motivation. Any manager should if they're in that position, but you know, and then is uh, I don't know. It doesn't. Uh, for what I've watched, you know, I watch Mercer Man and I watch Liverpool. I'm open to admit that. Um, he's no the most cl- like he's clinical in certain points, but he also wastes a lot of good chances as well. And you know, if you're playing a game against Man City, you can't really miss them big chances like that because again, City will cost you games. So I'm nervous but excited to see how um Nunes does in this game. Um, he scores, right, he well, scores the easy ones and goes and he misses the hard ones. Like, yeah, well, scores the hard, misses the no, easy ones. No, he scores the hard ones and scores, uh, nah, misses the easy ones. So. Uh, His yeah. two goals last night were very good. I'll tell you that, not Fair enough. Um, last game on Sunday, we have Hibs taking on Rangers at Easter Road. Now, this is probably where the cup upset could happen. If not, it'll probably be Monday night. Uh, but, you know, less said about that, the better than now. Um, I'll go first. I think Hibs can show real threat against Rangers. I like Nick Montgomery. Um, every game I've watched him against us, he's not personally done well. We've won most games against Nick Montgomery's side. Um, we've been dominant in most of them. You know, they line up the sort of, I think it's the sort of five back against us. They like to play Paul Hanlon in there as well. I think, you know, he's a slow defender. You can get him. Um, Rangers against. Was it Benfica? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Benfica last night. Um, I mean, Benfica were really poor. You know, they've just come after a five now, absolute battering after Porto. Um, but I thought Benfica were really poor on the night. You know, but I don't think Di Maria showed as much threat as he can, and gone to Ibrox next week for Rangers. That will be big for them if they can keep him quiet. Uh, I think they were unlucky to only go out two each. I thought Goldson was just caught in two minds. You know, you watch it and you go, oh, what's he doing? Like, why, why has he done that? But, you know, uh, uh, in that moment, he is just trying to get the ball away ultimately and it just falls in the wrong position. But 
I think Rangers get unlucky. Um, I think getting into this game, Rangers will obviously pick up more of the possession, being a bit more dominant on Hibs, but it's whether Hibs can stay back and sort of counter that dominance and try and get a goal. Because, you know, you see these teams scoring all the time, uh, early on, like the first 10 minutes of the game, and it's just not enough. It's never enough. They'll always, Rangers will always fight back and Celtic will always fight back. I think we've seen a change of that when Rangers were Ibrox to Motherwell. Um, Motherwell absolutely ran riot. I mean, I, I heard people saying Motherwell probably should have been three and a up within half an hour. Rangers were just really poor. So uh, it'll be interesting. I'm going to go, this one will be the shocker. I'm going to go Hibs will beat Rangers 2-1. Uh, I, think, I think a late goal will come, but I think Hibs will score in like the 90th minute just to win the game, send the crowd rotten. Uh, we'll go to Kane next. How about you thinking for this game? Obviously, Rangers be my uh, other Scottish team. But they're, they're one of the two from years ago. The big boys. But uh, no, I, I see Rangers winning. I think with Ben Fico, it's a close game. And then I, I, I think they'll win at the Ibrox. I, I think they'll get past Ben Fico. But I, I'm going to go Rangers 2-1. I, I see it happening. I see him going through. And I see him winning the cup. I'm putting it out there now. They're doing it. That's my statement. Some bold prediction. They're doing it. You know they're going to look a fool if they go out on Sunday, but... <laughs> oh, no, yeah. <laughs> it's just not going to last. Uh, oh, and what do you think for this game? Obviously, being a Celtic fan, seeing Rangers sort of pull that back. But, you know, Rangers haven't been the best in the last couple of weeks, so the young Hibs can cause an upset here. Um, Hibs... We know what Hibs are like. They can they can cause an upset at some point in in the games and the play against Rangers. Um, obviously Rangers against Benfica last night. I think Rangers probably should have won the game. Going back to your Golson point, I feel like if Golson just leaves it, it's just gone straight through to Jack Button. He doesn't they, the free kick is awful. I think it's just gone straight to Jack Button straight from it, um, and he's just. It's a great header for it to be fair. A good, great header. Um, uh, but aye, he's. I think they do get by Benfica. Benfica are not looking good right now. Um, Hibs, I don't know. They're not. They're not really the the best right now, and they should be. They should. It's a. They're a Hibs team. They should be fighting for like top four and all that, and they're fighting to try and get only sixth place this this season. Um. I hope there's an upset, but I can't see it, so I'm going to go Rangers 5 now. Oh, Jesus, massive. You don't think Hibs stand any chance at all? I don't think so. Rangers just... I know they've came back off a Motherwell defeat, and they should have probably beat Benfica last night, but Hibs are not looking the greatest, so I think from the first whistle, Rangers just will run dry up straight away. I think that's one thing you can say comfortably about Philippe Clement and management. He doesn't take any bullshit off his players. You know, goes and makes that mistake of the drop points to Motherwell. It will bollock them and it will tell them, you know, it needs to be better. So mm-hmm. I think you're right. I think Rangers will run out of traps. I just have a sneaky feeling that Hibs will sit in good defensively and they'll not be able to break them down. Which, you know, you need to try against sell from because, let's face it, mm. we don't have nearly the right amount of budget to even compete with them. I mean, Hearts are the closest and, you know, Hearts, all, you know, give them praise. They are competing the best they can. Um, But I, I don't know, I just, there needs to be a cup upset somewhere. And moving on, you know, it could be this game on Monday. It is Greenock Martin taking on Hearts. This is probably, this, you know, I'm going to put my bias to one side being a Simon fan. I will say this is looking like it could be tied to the cup round. Um, obviously, Martin putting it Motherwell last round. Looking pretty comfortable. You know, I don't think Motherwell really caused much for it. I know they scored, but again, Motherwell are just a really weird team this season. Um, Hearts coming in there, obviously, we know how good they are just beating Celtic and beating Airdrie away in the last round. You know, another ground where Airdrie's, you know, it's not a small stadium. They've got more capacity than we do. So, you know, when they've got a full house against Hearts, the upset could have happened if they didn't. Hearts managed to stick in and get the result. Um, this game's interesting to me because, obviously, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Lawrence Shanklin recently. You know, where's he, where does his future lie in football? Is it going to be at Hearts? Will he even be at Rangers or Celtic even next season? Um, I'm going to kick this one off and I'm going to say Hearts will win it 
2-1. I think Shankler will score two. And I think Hearts will go through to the next round. And that's not me trying to be biased and call Martin Shite and saying they can't cause an upset because it well and truly could happen. Martin <laughs> could go there, but again, they've lost the last two games to Inverness and Dundee United. So they're doing a bit of a different form than now. Um, and I just think Hearts will take advantage. But uh, Owen, what do you think for this game? Um, well, as you see, that obviously Hearts just came off the back of a, a good one against us. Um, I feel like, and this is the, this is where my cup upset will be. I feel like Martin won this, and I'm going to go two on Martin. All right, fair enough. I can see why people think an upset could happen here. I mean, you know, mm. they have already beat a Premiership team. Uh, I, I think. Uh, oh, I, I keep. I always forget the manager's name. I don't know. It will come to me. Dougie Emery. No. I think Emery's done a good job, you know, but I think they're only sitting up in that fourth sort of spot in playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. I think they can get playoffs this season. I'll be intrigued to see who wins the league because there's two big games this weekend. Rafe playing Dunfermline and Dundee United are playing our bro, who are still bottom. So it's going to be interesting to see who can win this. Um, Kane, what are you thinking for the Martin Hearts uh, game? I'm going Hearts 4 now. I think it'll be quite simple, to be honest. I think no cup run. You got you got your little win against Motherwell, but yeah, it's done. I love and, that uh, for you. Simple as that. <laughs> there's there's yeah. no bias because you know you're the same fan. I'm just saying, you know, I think everyone has a little cup run. Everyone sometimes you see it in the FA Cup. You know, they'll beat a bigger team, but you know, it happens once. Sometimes it happens twice, but it's not happening twice. Uh, it's it's going to be over. I, I can't face Martin having fans going to Hamden before we've had fans going to Hamden in my life. I, I, I really couldn't do it. Um, uh, I, I always try to take my bias to out of these prediction shows because I could just go and say Hearts will win 7-0 and that'll be a bit unfair on Martin because how well they've done. But realistically, I don't think Martin will get through tomorrow. Putting all my bias to the side and listen, I don't like Hearts as much as I don't like Martin. I hate both of them <laughs> just as much. Um, so I... Um, I don't think there's any really more games to talk about. Have you just got any talking points you'd like to bring up? Uh, no. No. I don't. I'll, get in, you're about I'll say that just something about uh, what Celtic and that, right? Obviously, going back to um, Ange and all that, obviously, when he left, we should never have went back the way. We should have went, went forward to a different manager. I don't think bringing somebody back that done it before was a good idea. So I feel like if we just went forward, I don't think we'd be in this situation right now. We obviously Ben and been here, but I think if we went forward, we wouldn't be in a situation that we're in right now. Well, let me ask you then, who do you want in the door? Um, I, I, say, say if you're ethically Rogers gets out next week, who would you want mm-hmm. to take our Celtic? I'd be looking for... I'd be looking for Celtic to go for the Border Clint manager. He's done it with Border for a long time now, so I feel like if he came in when Rogers did leave, I think we would we would trust him. We that trust him to make good transfers and all that. So I feel like if we get the Border Clint manager at some point, I think the situation we we would all be solved. To be fair. Would you not be flying the money out for shows in Medina? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't say not to. I wouldn't say not to. I, I don't think anybody in Scotland would say not to shows it. To be fair, <laughs> you can have you can have Tenag if you want. Send it, send him back. No, I might just pass that one. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but we'll wrap it up there. Um, Kane, Owen, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, no Kane, where can people find your podcast? I know oh. you've not uploaded in a, a bit, but you know, yeah, come back it's, 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 coming, it's coming back for the NXT roadblock <laughs> review coming out at some point. Uh, turn up talk zone, TTZ pod on Twitter, and then CM Kane on Twitter as well. You can find the podcast uh, there. I'll link it all down below as well. Um, Owen, where can people find you? Do you know your Twitter? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, I'll get it and I'll link it down below. Uh, I just want to say um, we should be back uploading consistently now. I'm starting a new segment, Couch to Coach. Uh, if you haven't seen that, check out on Twitter. 
Um, I'm streaming regularly as well. Uh, Football manager says I've got Kane as my assistant manager at Man United right now. We are knocking so much. That's good. Yeah. Bobby's gaffer. Nice. Ah, tactics. well, allegations at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Uh, I so we'll be streaming much more. I believe Kane streams a bit as well, so make sure you check out his Twitch. I'll link it all down below. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.